Hey, what's up guys? Chris Jr. here for Chris Card Productions. I'm back. It's been a while since my last tutorial and I'm really sorry. More on why that is a little bit later, but super happy to be back because we are kicking things off with a brand new series and this is episode one of said series and hopefully this will help you guys improve your cinematography and the overall look of your DSLR or in my case mirrorless footage uh, in post. We're actually going to be looking at some tricks in After Effects and in Premiere with the help of some plugins to get that nice film look. So that is the name of the series. So welcome to episode one of Get the Film Look. So I am partnering with AV3 and uh, we're gonna be using a few of the plugins out of the many that they provide. If you're interested in any of the plugins that I'm using today, go ahead and check them out. Now specifically, we're gonna be exploring a lot of the plugins from the Red Giant Magic Bullet Suite. And I know this might be pricey for some of us low, low budget filmmakers out there, but trust me, it is well worth the investment, especially for what you get. Think about it this way, if you're not investing money in renting or buying a high-end cinema camera, you're gonna have to invest a little bit of money to you know, figure out some workarounds to actually get the most out of the footage that you're capturing. And actually, if you get these type of plugins from AV3, you can usually get really good discounts and it's super simple and at a cheaper price. So one of the first things that we're gonna do in After Effects is creating a digital negative. Now, what this is is essentially a cleaner version of your footage. And we're gonna be doing that by using Denoiser 3, and then we're gonna be adding noise back in, or film grain, depending on what you prefer, with Renoiser. So let's dive into After Effects, and uh, let's see how we can get started by improving the footage that comes right out of your camera. Alright, so jumping right into it, the first thing that we're going to do is change our composition bitrate to 16 or higher. And this allows the effects applied to the clip to produce better results. Next, we're going to get rid of some of that nasty noise from our shot by applying Denoiser 3 to our clip. And it's important to keep in mind that the clip I'm using in this example was shot in S-Log3, which is a very noisy format since it's completely flat and not very rich in contrast, which makes the noise in your shot even more noticeable. So S-Log, like most log color spaces, will look horrible straight out of the camera, but will look amazing with the right color grading. So I really love how the interface here has been simplified to pretty much these three main sliders. And Denoiser 3 has actually gotten a lot smarter, so it can figure out the best way to solve noise in your image without having you worry about fine-tuning a bunch of parameters to get it right. So all you have to worry about now is how much of the noise you want to remove. And whenever you're denoising a clip, you are always needing to balance how much noise you are taking out and how much detail you have to compromise because of that. Fortunately, Denoiser 3 does an excellent job at maintaining detail while removing noise, but it is something to keep in mind whenever you are pushing the reduce noise slider above, let's say, 70. The smooth color slider will magically adjust any weird noise color shifts or artifacts, and uh, finally, the preserve detail slider allows you to bring back some of that sharp detail that you may have lost a bit when uh, bumping up the noise reduction a bit too much. And bam, just like that, you have cleaned up noise from your clip. Now there are some sharpening options within the Denoiser 3 plugin, but I like to add two instances of unsharp mask and bring out the smaller detail by decreasing the radius of one of them to something like 0.2 and uh, leaving the second unsharp mask to a radius of one, but decreasing the amount of sharpening for that one. So with that, we now have a very clean and clear image. So we don't have any clumps of noise overwhelming the shadows or any weird compression artifacts, but now it's too clean. And yes, that is a thing. This is why we're going to add noise back into our shot with Magic Bullet Film or Renoiser. Now, the reason why you want to denoise and then renoise is because the noise that you get out of your camera is bad, nasty noise most of the time. You know, you're getting a lot more noise in the shadowy parts of your image. You're getting clunks from your compression. You're getting weird artifacts. You're getting all this stuff that really stands out when you play it on a big screen and that really screams out DSLR footage. So by denoising it, you're actually getting rid of all of those nasty artifacts and all that stuff that you really don't want in your footage. And then you can add the type of noise that you really want, depending on the aesthetic of your short film or whatever you're shooting, back into your footage. So in my case, I really love 
the you know the detail and the, the organic texture that film grain can give to footage. So personally, once I denoise my clips, I will add film grain back onto them. And instead of just getting clumps of noise or grainy messes in the shadowy parts of your image, you're actually getting this overall nice texture that definitely gives your footage a whole different type of character. This is very minute stuff, but you know, if you're trying to step your game up to the pros, these are all details that you really have to think about. So before jumping into Renoiser, which is kind of like a final step anyways, I wanna show you how you can add film grain and even make a quick grade all at once with Magic Bullet Film. So the first thing you should do after you apply film is telling it what kind of footage it is looking at. In my case, I have S-Log3 footage, so I will select Log from the drop-down window. Then you can pick not just your film stock for the negative it is trying to emulate, but the type of film stock it would be printed on, which is something that is in itself really powerful and uh, super handy when you're really trying to nail a certain look. Another thing that I like is the color grading features within this plugin. So it's nice to make these adjustments right in here without having to drag in uh, other effects. And this vintage and modern slider is a super cool feature that allows you to emulate a more damaged and older version of the film stock you have selected. Or you can punch it up to a more stylized and blockbustery feel when you push the slider towards the modern end. Then you have handy vignette sliders and finally you can control how much of this effect is present uh, with the strength slider. Personally, I can sometimes be happy with the results I get just from this plugin alone without having to move towards more complex color grading. And playing with the different film stocks provided can give you a wide range of looks. Now, a good thing to always keep in mind is story. As you build up your look, make sure you're serving the story with it by making sure that the look you're giving to your scene fits tonally with the story you're trying to tell. Next up, we're gonna scrap Magic Bullet Film and explore how we can add noise back in with Renoiser. Now, as you can see here, we have our previous cleaning adjustments as well as a quick grade that I did with Magic Bullet Looks, which we will explore in just a second. Now, I'm skipping a bit ahead and that is because you usually wanna apply uh, noise back in once you've done your color grading and pretty much as your final step. So once you have applied uh, Renoiser when you're ready, every control here is rather intuitive and you can even just tweak a few settings to get a nice overall texture noise to fit your aesthetic preference. You have some handy presets which can give you a nice start and then you can control the grain amount and things like size and texture as well as a bunch of other parameters that I personally rarely touch but that give you true full control over the look of the grain or noise that you are introducing back into your shot. And now the moment you have all been waiting for. Let's take a look at how to actually grade the footage we have set up. So for this example, I'm gonna use Magic Bullet Looks along with Colorista and Mojo, which are separate plugins, but that are also packed into Looks. So to start off, kind of like what we did before, we wanna tell Magic Bullet Looks what kind of footage it is looking at by clicking the boxy icon on the bottom left side of the screen. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of this for my type of workflow when using log footage, since this will just convert your clip to a regular Rec. 709 color space, which to me kind of defeats the main purpose of shooting an S-Log in the first place. So instead I'm going to apply a LUT and I'm using a free LUT called M31 I believe which does a pretty good job at highlighting and bringing out the complementary colors in your scene. So I really like this LUT and I'll, I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to download that and play with it. So next I'm going to add a shadows and highlight effect and this will allow me to gain a bit more range in my shot by bringing out the shadowy background a bit more. Then I'm going to add a bit of diffusion to this shot and this is to further get closer to a celluloid film quality for our footage. And I'm adding this because digital can have a tendency of being a bit too defined and sharp, whereas the highlights on film have a different way of wrapping around each other, have just a, a bit of a softer quality. So as you can see here, we can renoise as well as throw in a bunch of other plugins from the Magic Bullet Suite right inside of Looks, uh, even Mojo 2, which is a pretty nice way of getting a very quick grade to your footage. Now, personally, I would probably only use Mojo 2 for grading when I'm trying to show a client a quick rough draft that needs some fast color grading, but it can also be used within looks to add a layer of punch to the scene. Now, the bulk of establishing the tone that I'm trying to give to a shot really happens when I add Colorista. So the first thing that I'll tweak are these three-way color wheels, and I typically have a color palette when I'm DPing or color grading something, but essentially what you can do is you can push the shadows to a certain color and then push the midtones or highlights towards maybe like a complementary opposite of that color. And I'll be releasing a color theory 
uh, video soon. It's actually going to be part of this series because it's super important to really understand color and what it can do and how it can really change uh, a shot. So in this case, we're just going to go with the typical complementary color. And I mean, at this point, it's all really pretty much just preference. I'm just showing you what I deem fit for this type of shot, but you know, you can uh, pretty much take these principles and use different effects. You can do whatever. This is just personally what I do if I were uh, color grading this shot. Now for this particular shot, I took huge inspiration from Fight Club, specifically the Tyler Durden house, like the abandoned house scene. I really love the colors in there. And I actually want to show you a really cool feature right inside of looks that can allow you to reference to some stills of your previous work, of other people's work, so that you can uh, maybe get as close as possible to a specific look that you have in mind. So if you click on this triangle at the top, it'll actually pull down the reference library. So if you want to import new ones, you can just click on this plus button and navigate to whatever pictures you are trying to import. And I find it super handy. You can just click on one of them and it'll do this uh, kind of split screen thing. And you can actually slide one frame over the other so you can do a bit of a before and after or you can really compare it to um, you know, other images that you have as reference. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna very quickly move through this and I'm applying some of the similar effects that I did in the previous shot. Uh, I just wanna show you how these tools can be used in different ways and you can really get a, a huge range of different looks depending on how you tweak each, uh, each effect from your toolbox. So it's really fun to just go into looks and just experiment a bit until you, uh, you find something that you're really happy with. Again, you can see here how uh, you can use Mojo to add a bit of punch to your scene, uh, depending on what kind of look you're going for. So I really love this feature. Uh, I love how you can just go back and forth between one still and another. And you can even compare your own work to different versions of a grade if you're not 100% set on a type of look for a scene. You can always take different snapshots. There's actually like a little camera icon on the top uh, right of the still. So to me, that is a huge improvement. I mean, that is the type of treatment I give to all of my clips now to get that extra crispy and clean look. But obviously you can do all of this into Premiere. So I actually wanna show you a bit of my workflow when editing in Premiere, because obviously I don't edit my videos in After Effects, I edit them in Premiere. And then if there's anything in my timeline that needs a little bit of extra work, I can always dynamic link into After Effects, which is why I love Adobe products. But when it comes to denoising and when it comes to making corrections to individual clips, if the clip is the same and it's just cut out and spread across your timeline, it doesn't make sense for you to do that over and over and over again. So let me show you a bit of a workaround that. So add denoiser, make your corrections, uh, renoise your clip. And once you do that, what you can do is you can actually nest that clip. And that is great because as you can see in my effects controls panel, all those effects have been moved into that nested sequence. So you can treat that as just a clip and cut it up, move it around, do whatever you would do in a regular edit. But now you can always make changes by double clicking in that nested sequence and uh, you know fine tuning uh, the effects on that clip within that nested sequence. So that solves any problems of you know, you've had it all cut up and then you wanna make one minor change and you have to change it for every single clip that you've cut. Uh, this is actually a big time saver. And I know this because I've done it both ways and I, I was getting so frustrated that I had to do that every time that this is now the way that I work with this type of workflow. And of course, you can always dynamic link that clip into After Effects if you wanna do some further tweaking and uh, wanna do some, some slightly fancier right, so stuff. So once again, I would like to thank AV3 for making this video possible. And if you are interested in any of the plugins that I use today, definitely check out AV3. Go to their website. They have a super quick and easy buying process and they have a ton of discounts all the time. So definitely check them out. I really, really recommend them. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please leave a like. It really does help. And if this is your first time on this channel, please hit subscribe. And since YouTube is being a little bit weird, also hit that little bell icon so that you actually are notified when the new videos are up. And definitely don't miss out because there are 10 episodes in total of Getting the Film Look, and it's all about thinking outside the box and pretty much looking at different creative ways of getting the most out of your footage, no matter what kind of camera you have. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and you know, as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Definitely share them in the comments section below. I want to know what you guys want to see next. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Corp Productions, and I will see you next time.